When the average person thinks of the founder of Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg's name and face would probably be the first that comes to mind. Most of Facebook's public addresses and announcements over the past few years came from Zuckerberg himself, and it would always be his name that gets reported on by the news. However, Zuckerberg wasn't alone in creating the world's largest social network. He had help. In fact, he had a lot of help. Today, we're going to be shining the spotlight on one man, in particular, a man you probably haven't come across until today and who just so happens to be one of the world's richest people. If you've seen the movie, The Social Network, you remember Dustin Moscovich as the kid from Jurassic Park who did little more than sit in a corner and code. Like most other things in the movie, that wasn't exactly true. As you guessed it we're going to be talking about Dustin Moscovich, one of the youngest self-made billionaires in history. Let's get down, let's get down to business. Dustin Moscovich was born Dustin Aaron Moscovich on the 22nd of May, 1984, which makes him only 36 years old today. He was born in Gainesville and grew up in Ocala, both in the Sunshine State of Florida to a Jewish family. When it was time for him to go to college, he picked out Harvard University and attended the school as an economics major. As you can imagine somewhere upon setting foot in Harvard, Dustin met a young Mark Zuckerberg. He was in the same Harvard University dorm as Moscovich, as they plotted to create an online directory of all of Harvard's students to help residential students get to know one another better and find members who live in other residences. They did this with Eduardo Saverin and Chris Hughes, and they originally named the network thefacebook.com. Actually, their very first entrepreneurial debut was initially known as Facemash, and it was sort of like a hot or not Tinder-like site that compiled photos of residential students. Users could then vote between two students to determine who was hotter. Zuckerberg hacked the Harvard database pulling everyone's images in order to create the website. Naturally, Harvard's administration shut the site down, with Zuckerberg facing expulsion and charged with violation of privacy and copyrights, and breaching campus security. Luckily for him, the charges were dropped, and he was able to develop the social platform moving forward. On the day that the Facebook was launched in 2004, 1,200 Harvard students had signed up. After a month passed, over half of the undergrad population already had a profile. In fact, as it's evident by its massive following Facebook did not stop growing from there. It went from being offered to other Boston universities, other Ivy League schools, and, eventually, all universities across the United States. Its rapid growth was probably what pushed Dustin and another team member, Chris Hughes, to take a year off from Harvard to move to Palo Alto, California to work on the social platform. The place is now dubbed as Silicon Valley. The company officially became Facebook.com in 2005 after they purchased the domain name for $200,000. By September of 2006, anyone with a registered, working email address was eligible to create an account. Today, the company is valued at roughly $720 billion, with its market cap more than doubling since the end of 2016. At the time of Facebook's rise to prominence, Dustin was the company's first chief technology officer and the vice president of engineering. He also owned a chunk of Facebook's shares, which allowed him to earn billions. In 2011, he owned roughly 2.34% of Facebook's shares, which made him the youngest self-made billionaire in history. However, I guess all great things must come to an end. Moscovich announced that he was leaving Facebook on the 3rd of October, 2020, to form a new company called Asana with a Facebook engineering manager named Justin Rosenstein. On Asana, teams can streamline and track the flow of work without missing a beat. According to Moscovich's LinkedIn profile, Asana's mission is to help humanity thrive by enabling all teams to work together effortlessly. We've reimagined how work gets done through a fast and versatile web application that connects everyone with what's going on, their shared priorities, and who owns each part of the effort. It seems that Dustin might just have the Margus touch as the product was made available to the general public in April of 2012. By December of 2018, the company was valued at $1.8 billion, with annual revenue of over $142 million in 2019. The company also received a 4.5 over 5 rating from PC Magazine, getting praise for being one of the best collaborations and productivity apps for teams. And if you've ever had the chance to use Asana, 
I'm sure you would agree how smooth the user experience is. In the months leading up to Asana's direct listing, Mr. Moscovich supplied the bulk of the company's capital, investing $450 million through two convertible notes. Mr. Moscovich will earn an interest of 3.5% annually from the notes until they convert to shares in 2025. Mr. Moscovich viewed the convertible notes as a financial investment rather than an extension of his philanthropy. Moscovich was also the biggest angel investor for PATH, a social platform for photo sharing and messaging. The site is now discontinued after being acquired by South Korean company Kakao, but Moscovich was reportedly partially responsible for David Moran, then owner of PATH, to reject an offer from Google to acquire the company for $100 million. Apart from being a tech-savvy businessman, Dustin is also a well-known philanthropist. He co-founded the organization Good Ventures with his wife, Carrie Tuna, back in 2011, with the goal to do as much good as possible. They partnered with GiveWell to give to partner charities to align with the goals of effective altruism. They are also known as the youngest couple to sign the giving pledge by Warren Buffett and Bill Gates, which basically means that they commit to giving away a sizable chunk of their wealth to those who are in need. Overall, Moscovich seems like a pretty good guy, a pretty good guy with a hefty bank account, and a heart to help those who are less fortunate. Some may say that Mr. Moscovich has the appearance of a reluctant billionaire. He has been known to drive a Volkswagen hatchback and fly in economy, and he extols the virtues of Burning Man, the desert festival that emphasizes radical self-reliance and radical inclusion. In some circles, Mr. Moscovich is known as the wealthiest proponent of effective altruism, a philosophy that urges followers to direct their resources to causes that will help others the most, often with the aid of hard data. Moscovich has voted for the Democratic Party candidates in each election in which he has voted, and stated, Though we've voted for the Democratic nominee each of the times we've cast a ballot, we've considered ourselves independent thinkers who respect candidates and positions from both sides of the aisle. Prior to their donation for the 2016 election cycle, Moscovich had donated roughly $10,000 over their lifetime to federal candidates, most of it to Sean Eldridge, the husband of Facebook co-founder Chris Hughes. For the 2016 United States presidential election, Moscovich announced that he and his wife would donate a large $20 million to support Hillary Clinton, the Democratic Party nominee, arguing that the dangers of a Donald Trump presidency are significant and that they were making their donation despite being skeptical of allowing large donors to influence election cycles through money. The New York Times quoted Moscovich's blog post on the subject, the Republican Party and Donald Trump, in particular, is running on a zero-sum vision, stressing a false contest between their constituency and the rest of the world. This made him the third largest donor in the 2016 campaigns. It is ironic that the unearthed Cambridge Analytica itself allowed Trump to win and gain office. Stay tuned, stay educated, 